In this video, we're going to discuss how to collect strike and dips off of a map. I do have other videos on how to make a cross section, but this one specifically is going to focus on what you should do um, when you are looking at these strike and dip symbols and trying to end up transferring those to a cross section. So what you wanna do is you wanna look at the line that you've selected for making your cross section. So usually you'll label it something like A to A prime, and then you'll have a line that connects A with some A prime that would be down here. You want to make a profile line, if you're in a position to make your own, that runs perpendicular to structure. So if I'm looking at something like this, if this is the pattern on my map, I see a green unit, a blue unit, a red unit, a blue unit, another green unit, and I, I know that there's some kind of pattern there, and that pattern, um, assuming that north is up, that pattern is kind of running or trending north, east, southwest. So I wanna make a, a profile line that's perpendicular to that. Okay, now assuming that you've already collected your contacts and your topographic information, you're gonna be ready to start collecting your strike and dips. So, or your orientation measurements. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna try and select orientation measurements that kind of hug that line that you've created. So for example, let's say that there's a strike and dip over here that's 35. I'm gonna select this 40 over this 35 because the 40 is closer to my profile line. You also wanna make sure that you capture any major patterns. So let's say that all of the strike and dips through here uh, toward A seem to be 40s. So let's say there's one right here that's 41, and there's one right here that's 40 again. You don't need to necessarily keep collecting those strike and dips. Uh, they all seem to be conveying the same information. However, if you, if you find yourself moving down your line and seeing that all of a sudden you're not only changing dip direction but dip amount, so here going from 40 to 25, you wanna make sure that you are capturing that information. Um, so just because there's a strike and dip uh, that's in a different unit or a little bit of a different distance on the line that you've selected to construct your cross section on, you don't necessarily need to collect that information. So what you wanna do is you're gonna start by taking your, your strip of paper after you've selected the strike and dips that you think are, are relevant. So for me, I'm gonna select that 40 and this 25 because they convey changes in dip uh, direction and amount, and also because they hug that line. Um, I'm gonna take my strip of paper, and I've kind of colored mine yellow so that I can see what's going on here. And I'm gonna lay that strip of paper down along my profile line. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure I'm still recording. Yep, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect that orientation information. The first thing I'm going to do is take my ruler and I'm going to put my ruler perpendicular to this piece of paper that I've laid down, so perpendicular to my cross-section line. And I'm going to mark the position of that strike and dip measurement. So I'm using a ruler to make it perpendicular because what I've found is if you're, especially if you're using a transparent ruler or a ruler with really nice long marks for inches or centimeters, you can take those marks, like here I'm gonna use the line for 10 inches, and you can lay that on your profile line. And now your profile line and your strip of paper are 90 degrees to your ruler. And I'm gonna slide that ruler up until I get to the intersection of the, lo the long line here with the 40, which represents the direction of strike, and this little tick mark, which represents the direction of dip. These are always 90 degrees to each other. So I'm gonna slide my ruler up until I intersect that point right there. Let me get my Sharpie and kind of highlight that. I 
once you get there, you're going to make your tick mark on your profile line, on your, your piece of paper that you're using to collect this information. Now this represents the position along my profile where I'm going to eventually plot a sled or a tadpole that shows or conveys that dip, strike and dip information. Okay. But unless that strike and dip measurement is perfectly perpendicular, so unless the strike associated with this is perfectly perpendicular to where the line along which I'm constructing my cross section, I'm going to have to adjust it. I'm going to have to calculate the apparent dip um, instead of this value, which is the true dip. So the way that you're going to do that is you're going to take, I'm going to remove my yellow sheet of paper for a second. You're going to take your protractor and you're going to put whatever the, the flat line portion of your protractor is along your line along which you're constructing your cross section. And you're going to rotate your arm until your arm is lined up with that strike. So I'm going to come up here, rotate that. Okay. I get uh, 88 degrees. Okay. So almost 90, but not 90. So I'm going to make a note of that. So the what we're going to call the beta value associated with that 40, where, where 40 is the true dip, the beta value is going to be 88 degrees. All right. So now I need to know what the apparent dip is. What If I'm doing a, a cross section that is vertically exaggerated by one time, what is the actual degree amount that I'm going to plot on that cross section? So here's what I'm going to do. Let me use the formula. Oh, that's the one my son got a hold of. Sorry, I knew there was one of the Sharpies in this bunch that Max had a heyday with. Okay. Tangent of the apparent dip is going to be tangent of true dip times sine of beta, where beta is the acute angle between strike of the, of the uh, measurement of interest and the line along which you're constructing your cross section. So for example, here is 88. If I had measured on the other side, I would have gotten um, 92. Sorry, guys. If I had gotten 92, that's not acute. It's greater than 90 degrees. I would have just subtracted from 180, gotten 88. So over here, I'm going to do tangent of apparent dip, which is what I want. That's what I'm going to put on my cross section. Tangent, my true dip is 40 degrees times sine of 88 degrees. Keep in mind that sine of 90 is 1. So the closer you are to 90 degrees, the closer your apparent dip is going to be to your true dip. Um, tangent of 40 degrees is 0 0.839. Sine of 88 degrees is 0 0.99. Also, just a word, if, you're, uh, if you don't have a calculator and you're Googling this, make sure that the phrase you type into Google is tangent of 40 degrees. Make sure that you actually type in the word degrees on that. Uh, same thing if eventually we're going to do a tan, we're going to do an inverse tangent. So if I wanted to know the inverse tangent of a value, I would say something like, that in degrees. So this type of phrasing is what you're going to use in Google to look up those values. Okay, so tangent of 40 degrees we have, sine of 88 degrees we have. Multiply those two together. I get tangent of that apparent dip is 0 0.831. And then I'm going to take the inverse tangent of both of those. I also tend to write a tan instead of inverse tangent because that's the command in Google Sheets. 
um, and in Excel. Okay. So that gives me an apparent dip of 39.7 degrees. So if I were going to draw in, uh, let's say that this is associated with a cross section, right? Instead of drawing a, a little indicator that dips 40 degrees, I would draw in a little indicator that dips 39.7 degrees. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to this other side. Let's go down to the 25. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and mark the position along my profile that that 25 is going to hit. And this one is going to be a little bit tougher because it's on the opposite side. But I did that for a reason. If you're only marking on one side of your profile, then you're probably missing some good strike and dips. So I've got A aligned with A over here, and I marked that 40. The other thing to be weary of is it's very tempting to say, oh, I want to know what's on the other side of this line. I'm just going to rotate this piece of paper. But notice that if you do that, now A is down here, and A prime would be up here. So we're not actually going to capture the right position along that line. So what you've got to do is either thin out your sheet of paper, uh, fold it in half, you gotta find some way to do this where you can accurately collect that information. So I folded my sheet of paper in half. I have this intersection point. This is what is gonna help me determine where to plot that data. Again, I'm gonna figure out 90 degrees to that profile line. Where does that point hit? It's right here. So at this point, 39.7. At this one, we're going to have some other dip amount. Let's figure out what that dip amount is. Oh, one other note. You might, when you, when you start to do this, you might notice that when you project over that you're not in the same unit. So for example, if this measurement of 25 had been right here and I had projected over, I would have been in the blue unit. If you're really close to your profile line and the structure you're studying is overall much larger than this distance, you're probably fine. Um, the, I guess the more nuanced approach would be to carry this over and make sure that you're moving along structure. But as long as you're hugging that profile line and your structure that you're dealing with is big compared to this distance, you're probably okay to just project it over. All right, let's go ahead and measure our beta value for the 25. So again, I'm going to take this part of my protractor and put it along the line. And I'm going to maneuver this until my arm of my protractor is aligned with the strike of the measurement symbol. Right, I get 65 degrees is my acute angle right there. So let's go ahead and do that measurement or that calculation. True dip was 25 and the beta value was 65. And that red is a little intense. I'm going to calm down off that. <laughs> All right. Using the same formula that was up here, um, A is going to be the inverse tangent of tangent of true dip times sine of beta. I did each of these individually. Tangent of 25 is 0 0.466. Sine of 65 is 0 0.9. Again, if you were typing this phrase into Google, you just want to add in degrees at the end. Right, these two values.
I get 22.8 degrees. So that means that at this position along my cross section, the value that I'm actually plotting, assuming that my cross section is vertically exaggerated only by one time, so not vertically exaggerated at all, is 22.8 degrees. Come over here, and it's a little bit shallower. All right. So if your cross section is going to be vertically exaggerated, then you need to look up the formula for plotting a vertically exaggerated um, apparent dip. And basically what you're gonna do is, I think it's the, the arc tangent or inverse tangent of this value, of the tangent of this value times vertical exaggeration. But that's, that's like just recalling from memory. You should definitely look that up. Uh, but you do in some way need to multiply by uh, the vertical exaggeration that you are using for your cross section. Now, the last thing I'm going to encourage you to do is make sure that the strike and dips you chose make sense. So like if I'm looking at this cross section, do you see how on this side to the southeast, the section or the bedding seems to thicken a little bit, but over here it's thin? Well, we know that unless bedding is pinching out, that it's not actually thinning. I mean, one of the goals that's probably being drilled into you in your structural geology class right now is maintain bed thickness, and you wanna do that, right? So one way that bedding looks thicker is because it's shallower, the exposure of it is shallower. So for example, if I'm drawing in that green unit right there, that green unit is maybe gonna look thin over here, but it's gonna look thicker over here. Like notice the, the distance between this point and this point versus this point and this point. Like this is wider. This unit looks thicker, but it's not any thicker, right? It's just the way that the dip is making that appear. So far we're gonna color this in. Sorry guys, I use a lot of green. It's my second favorite color. <laughs> All right, that's what I mean by that. And just, and this is now not gonna be accurate at this point, but I can't handle seeing an empty subsurface, so. Anyway, that's what I, what I mean by that. It can look thicker, but it's just based on dip. So always give yourself time to reflect and make sure that the strike and dip that you found um, makes sense for the structure that you're working with. All right. Thanks. Bye.